Hi, I'm Kate Richberg, and welcome to Wire Edged Pendant. The inspiration for the technique that I use in this piece came from wire working guru and my friend Lisa Niven Kelly. It's my interpretation of one of her signature techniques. I hope you'll enjoy it, so let's get started. Here are the tools and materials that we're going to use to make today's project. First off, I have an aluminum blank. This is anodized aluminum, and it's a two-sided blank with a design on one side and plane on the other. I have a bench block and a one-pound hammer for stamping, and I have an initial letter stamp here. I have a Pro Polish pad and a silver permanent marker that we're going to um, highlight the initial when it's after it's stamped here into the aluminum. I have a hole punch plier. This size hole punch plier is a 1.8 millimeter. And over here I've got some wire. This is 26 gauge sterling silver wire. An assortment of beads. Any beads will do as long as they're about a 2 to 3 millimeter size, but specifically today I'm going to be using a 3 millimeter bicone and a few size 11 seed beads. And then I have a jump ring to hang on uh, the pendant, and that is an 18 gauge wire with a 5 millimeter inside diameter. Here are a few more of the tools that we're going to be using for today's project. I have some pliers here in front of me. I have a pair of flush wire cutters, a pair of bent chain nose pliers, and a pair of regular chain nose pliers. And I also have a dapping block. The blank that I'm using is a one inch blank, so I need to choose the size of the dap uh, according to the size of the blank that I'm using. So for the one inch, I'm going to use the largest sized indentation and the largest dap. So the first step to making this pendant is we need to stamp the initial right in the center, and I'm going to stamp it on the plain side of the blank. So I have my initial letter stamp here, and I want to make sure that my aluminum blank is on a nice metal bench block that's resting on a nice stable table surface to minimize any risk of that stamp not stamping correctly. And I'm just going to center it in the middle of my blank, feel around so it's nice and stable on the face of the blank, and I'm going to use my one pound mallet to give it one strike. And you can see, it's a little hard to see here, but there we go. The K is centered in the middle of my blank. Now we're going to add a little color to this initial, and I'm going to use this metallic permanent marker. And you need to be really careful when you add color to these anodized aluminum blanks. You have to put it in quickly and then take it off quickly so it doesn't leave a shadow around the letter. So we're going to do this really quickly by putting the, getting the ink in there and then we're going to buff it off using this Pro Polish pad. So here goes. Really push the marker down to get that um, color right into the grooves of the letter and then pick up your Pro Polishing Pad and buff it off. And you can see if you have a little bit of residue on there, you just have to keep buffing and buffing and it'll come clean. All right, that looks pretty good. And if you feel like you didn't get enough color in the letter, you can actually go back in with your marker and recolor and buff it one more time. Now we want to mark the placement for the holes that we're going to punch along the edge of this blank. And since this blank is black, it's hard to get a mark, say, with a pen on here to see. So I'm actually going to mark my holes using my period design stamp. And to lay those holes out, it's pretty easy. You can measure, but I think it's pretty simple 
to just start out by making a mark at the very top of your blank, and this is eventually where your jump ring is going to go. And just a light tap will do it. Now I'm going to go down to the opposite end and tap it, and to the side, and to the other side. And I'm making these little stamps just in from the edge of the blank. And then I'm going to come in and split that difference with another mark here. And over here. And the last one over here. Now the marks don't have to be completely even, but you can see, since I eyeballed that, it's not too bad. Remember, this edge is going to be covered with some freeform wrapping, so the holes aren't really going to be seen. Before we put the curve to this blank, we actually need to punch those holes that I've marked. So I'm going to come in with my hole punch plier, and I have a little piece of paper there on the tip of the plier, and that's actually going to act as a cushion between my metal tool and my metal blank, so I don't have a mark. I'm going to line the tooth of the hole punching plier up on the little mark I've made with my period stamp, and you can kind of feel that the tip of your hole punching plier actually rests in that little indentation, so it's almost easier to feel where you're going to punch rather than actually have to look at where you're going to punch it. So we're just going to punch through very easily, wiggle the blank off, and there you have your hole. We're going to continue making those holes all the way around the edge of our blank. Okay, here you can see I've punched all of the holes around the edge, and notice this guy, it's a little off, but you know what? This is going to be so covered and embellished with wire and beads that you're hardly going to even notice that that hole placement is a little off. So we're just going to keep going, and now we're going to curve the blank. To curve the blank, I'm going to tap it in my dapping block. And I've chosen the little well here where it's going to fit. And if your blank is a different size, all you need to do is try it in the different indentations in your dapping block and see where it fits the best. I'm going to grab my curved dap and lay it right on top of the blank and give it just some light taps with my brass mallet. Now, you can see that, or here actually, that I'm not hitting this super hard. I just want to gradually create a curve in this blank. We don't want to throw it um, out of shape or distort the holes in any way, so those gentle repeated taps are a lot better for the blank than just hitting it with really hard blows one or two times. So let's keep going. And see how I'm moving the dap around? That's perfectly okay. And then I'll pick it up and check what I have here. It's looking pretty good, but see right down here, it's still not quite as hammered out as I want it to be. So I'm going to give it a few more taps. I want to get that edge there and maybe this edge here. All right, let's take a look. Now here we have our nice curved blank. You can see the K is on the inside or the concave portion of the blank, and the pretty pattern on the anodized aluminum is on the curved side of the blank. So now, once that part is done, we're ready to embellish the sides with some wire and beads. I've got some 26 gauge wire here, and I've cut about 18 inches of that wire so I can wrap all the way around this blank. And I'm going to start with the hole that's just to the right of the center here. And I'm just going to poke my wire through and give it a little anchoring right here on the edge. 
And remember, you want to be really freeform. So I'm just going to pick up a few of these beads, and I'm not even paying that much attention to the shape or the color. I'm just going to pick up a few, and in this case, a few means four. And I'm just going to bring them around the side and poke the wire through the other open hole. Tighten it down. Now at this point, that's really all there is to it. I'm just going to maybe back my wire up here and tighten it down, and then maybe add a couple more beads. Again, just a random assortment. Bring the wire around. and tighten. I'm going to continue wrapping the wire with beads around through the holes to add some freeform embellishment all the way around the rim of the blank. And here's your finished pendant. I finished the wire off by just ending it by wrapping it through the last little hole there and tucking it in along that freeform wrap. So here you have your finished pendant. We've got the K stamped in the middle, and on the back, there's the pretty anodized aluminum design, and you're all set to go. Mm -hmm.